live with another guy. <laughs> Welcome, my friends, to another math video. Yes, this is obviously recorded. I know I'm not coming at you live. I'm not streaming anything really all that special. It's just another math video, okay? Although, for some of us, that's wonderful. I know, because we're talking about math. I love math. And this is an emotional video because, well, this is going to be my last video for fifth grade for some time, I believe. I'll probably start getting some sixth grade videos up. I was going to go back and got some requests for some fourth grade videos, but I'm just having the fun teaching the math. And well, but this is the last one. You will have a lesson after this, the 11.11, .11, I believe it is. But it's one I did, oh, I don't know, a year ago or two years ago, something like that. So this one is the last one I'll be doing for a while. Okay. <laughs> I know. Let me, I need to wipe my tears. Okay. I'm all right. I'm good. I'm good. Okay. So it's problem solving. Yes, my two favorite words in math. A lesson, 11.10. And look at our topic. Of course, we're doing problem solving, but we're going to be doing it by comparing volume. Woo, that's our topic. Yes, comparing maybe one volume to another. Cool. Our essential question. This is our purpose, our learning target, our learning intention. How can you use this strategy, make a table, to compare different rectangular prisms with the same volume? Ooh. Make a table to compare different rectangular prisms. Obviously, they're going to look different, but they're going to have the same volume. Oh, this is going to be cool. All right. We can't do any of that unless we unlock the problem. That's right, my friends, because this is real world, baby. Real world. Real world. Now, it says Adam has 51 inch cubes. The cubes measure one inch on each edge. So keep in mind, that's those are like cubic units, we think of. They're cubic inches because it's one by one by one. One inch by one inch by one inch is a cubic inch in this case. Adam wonders how many rectangular prisms, each with a different size base, that he could make with all of the one inch cubes. Oh my goodness. Okay. It says use the graphic organizer below to help you solve the problem. Okay. Sounds good. Let's take a look. Woo. First it says, well, we're going to read the problem. What do I need to find? I need to find the number of rectangular prisms. Let's see if we can fit this in here. Rectangular. Each with a different size, like base, right? That have a volume of, what is it, 50 cubic inches. Now it says, what information do I need to use? Well, I can use the formula, length times width times height. I don't know why there's two blanks here. I can use the formula length times width times height. Maybe I'm supposed to have two lines? I don't know. Um, oh, last time, you know, we did this here. I don't know. Or base times height. That's a strange one there, though. I don't, I don't tend to use this one here. Just use the full one. But and the factors of oh, okay, I'm looking over here at the table. Ah, the factors of 50 because we're trying to do 50 cubic inches. I see. Okay. How will I use this information? Well, I will use the formula and the factors of 50 in a table that is that shows all of the possible combinations of dimensions with a volume of yeah, we want 50 cubic inches without repeating the dimensions of the bases because we want them to look different. Well, let's look at our table. We have one times one. That's if you had 50, right? It had a base of 50. They were like all on the ground, just one layer. Here now we're doing one times two. This is the base square. So we'd one by two is going to be two. So the height would have to be 25 to get 50. Uh, let's see. We can also do one by five, okay? And then have 10 layers, giving us 50. Okay, kind of see the pattern here. Well, we're going to have to move on to 2 here. 2 and 25. That's 50. So the height would have to be 1. That's another possible. And we just show that by 2 times 25 times 1 equals 50. All right. We could also do, or we could do 2 times 5, which is 10. 10 is a factor. We'd have to have 5 layers, though. 10, 50. So you can see that. That equals 50. Of course, the classic 5 times 5. 5 times 5 is 25, so you'd have to have two layers of that to get 50. Which ones haven't we used here? 2, 2 times 2, 2 times 5. Oh, we could have, this would be different, 5 times 10. And then, of course, you wouldn't have but one layer, because that's 50. So 5 times 10 is 50, times 1. You can see all these rectangular prisms are going to look different, all right? They're all going to have different amounts. Now it says, evaluate. What else do you need to do to solve the problem? Well, to solve the question that they asked, like how many possible, well, I need to, I would need to count. 
I would need to use a table and count um, all of the possible rectangular prisms. Kind of sloppy, I went fast. How many rectangular prisms with different bases can Adam make using 51 inch cubes? How many were there? Let's take a look. One, two, four, six. Oh, there were, there was exactly 10. 10 rectangular prisms. And I'm just gonna add in here with different bases. All right, I think I covered it. Yep, we got it. Cool. Woohoo! Yeah, yeah. Now, page master. So now it says, try another problem. Mrs. Wilton is planning a rectangular flower box for her front window. She wants the flower box to hold exactly 16 cubic feet of soil. How many different flower boxes, all with whole number dimensions and a different size base, will hold exactly 16 cubic feet of soil. Use the graphic organizer below to help you solve the problem. Okay, well, first thing is, what do I need to find? Kind of tells us there in the question, right? I need to find out how many. Okay, so how many different how many different flower boxes with different size bases will hold that 16 cubic feet of soil? Yes. So what information do I need to use? Well, I know that, um, I know that the flower boxes are rectangular prisms, so I'm definitely, what do I mean if I'm gonna be using the volume, right? The length times width times height, I'm going to be, well, I need to make sure to use factors of 16 to get a product of 16 cubic um, feet. Something like that. What information? I'm definitely going to be using those numbers, those factors. How will I use the information? Actually, part of that's right there, I think. How would I use it? I'm going to use the information. So I have the volume. So I am going to use the factors. That seems very similar. I don't know. So what information do I need to use? I definitely need to use the volume formula. Okay, I'm trying to separate these two. The what and the why, or the how, which is the why. Kind of like how, how will I use the information? Well, with the formula, I'm going to need to use factors of 16 to get that product. So that's what kind of goes there. So let me just write that down. I will use, I will use the formula of volume and the factors of 16 and list them on a table because that's what we were doing before and list them on the table. Woo! Okay. Should I just try to draw it really sloppily? <laughs> I think I will. So we'll see how bad this turns out. Okay. Sloppy, but not the worst I've ever seen. Okay. So we'll start off with our one times one, which means the height has to be 16. That's if we had them all on the ground just like last time. So one times one times 16 is equal to 16. And we're just going to put centimeters cubed. Okay. And obviously we have one times two. Well, two times eight then would equal 16. Same thing, one times two. We could do this. It means the same. 16. I'm sorry, no. Times eight. Okay, you did not see that. No. Okay, times eight. That's going to be 16 centimeters cubed. Go next possible, one times four. And then, of course, four times four is 16. So we could do that. One times four times four equals 16 centimeters cubed. Uh, could we do one times eight? We could. One times eight is eight times layers, we had two layers, that also equals 16. Boy, they're really getting us to work hard on this one here. I'm going right over my line, as you can see. And then I can't really do one times 10, 12, 13. I could do, oh, this was actually 16 high, so we could actually do one, oops, my thing moved. Okay, so one times 16, because that one is actually 16 high. Sorry, I actually had that confused, which means the height here would only be one. That's another possibility times one is equal to 16 centimeters cubed. Oh wow, that was like one, two, three, four, five. I have maybe four more. I don't even know if this is gonna be right. Two times two, that works, that's like four. So then this would have to be four. Two times two, times four. Uh, we could jump to two times four. That's eight, that would mean that would be two. That has a different base. I'm just looking at my bases, making sure they're not the same. Two times four. Okay, times two is equal to 16 centimeters cubed. And then could I do two times eight? That's never been done. It has not. Two times eight is 16, so the height would be one. Another possibility, times one. Okay, oh, and what about four times four by four? Four times four, 16 
height of one. Oh, that was a lot of work. I don't know, is there any others? I can't go to six, seven, eight. Now I have an eight by two. So I can't repeat that one. I think that's the last one on there. How many is that? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I think there's only nine instead of 10 this time because four is a double, I don't know. How many flower boxes with different size bases will hold exactly 16 cubic feet of soil using whole number dimensions? I'm gonna say nine. Nine different size. Different size bases. That's what I would say. Woo woo, yeah, yeah. Oh my goodness, what a mess that one was there. A lot of work. Woo, all right, my friends. Hey, thank you for coming along, my friends. It is time to say, wait. Is this the last video? Oh, this is it. Oh my goodness, you guys. Wait, let me get my tissue. Oh. Okay, just kidding, you guys. Hey, you know I'm gonna be coming back. I'll be making more videos. Now, live long and prosper.